You said that the dollar will be inflated out of existence. So the logical follow-up to that is, well, what's going to replace the dollar? So you mentioned mm. gold. Now, what about what about cryptocurrencies? What about Bitcoin? A lot of people are saying it's the new gold. Well, what do you think? Uh, I was a late adopter to cryptocurrency. I was given a physical Bitcoin uh, when I, I bought a Belgian friend of mine a, a meal. A physical and, Bitcoin? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, they actually exist. They actually, they actually exist, and it has the codes printed. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, all right. Okay. All right. Yeah, so it's kind of a collector's item. I've still got sure. it in my safe deposit box, but if I wanted to put it online, I could collect $40,000 or whatever it's worth today. So yeah, all right. um, that was $13, but I didn't get into uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I was Look, I'm very favorably inclined towards Bitcoin because what is money, Okay. There are, there are five characteristics of money that Aristotle defined in the 4th century BC. They were valid then, they're still valid now. It's got to be durable, divisible, convenient, consistent. Bitcoin is all of those things, just as gold is. Uh, but uh, I was wondering about, well, what's the value proposition? I mean, how do you get from, how do you keep from getting stuck holding the bag with a digital nothing, which is isn't the value is. proposition exactly what you just said. The four properties of money. I mean, what's the value proposition of gold besides industrial use? Well, right, the value that that's correct. It does have a use value, other than as money itself. It's used as you know, gold. People forget is the most. Uh, um, uh, it, it's not the most reflective. That's silver. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the most conductive. That's silver. It's very close to that, though. But it, it is the most durable. It's the most non-reactive of all naturally occurring elements. And uh, that gives it increasing industrial uses, but they're, but they're trivial by comparison to its use as money. Uh, the value proposition for Bitcoin is that it's uh, a very portable and transferable form of wealth. In other words, uh, gold has disadvantages. You have some, you've got to cross a border with it, and you've got to store it. I mean, Bitcoin is a way to cro cross borders easily. Most people don't realize that three quarters of the people on this planet lived in blocked currency countries where your, um, your, your Quacha or your Pula or your Diram or all these crazy currencies, they're worth absolutely zero outside of the geographical place sure. that issues. But with a smartphone and a Bitcoin, you can go anywhere. So that's the real value proposition for Bitcoin. Also, its supply is limited. I'm bullish on Bitcoin. I don't know how bullish because, mm -hmm. listen, it's already, well, look, we can talk about What's well, the value? Who knows, who knows how high it could go or how low, but uh, I'm just wondering whether or not you think it's a contender for replacing the dollar like gold is. You mentioned that gold, we could see a return to, uh, you know, gold is money, otherwise potentially known as a gold standard. Uh, yeah. Could we potentially see a Bitcoin standard as well? Well, it's already happened in El Salvador. Sure. The current, the current president of El Salvador, a fellow by the name of Bukele, uh, El Salvador, incidentally, is one of the countries in the world that uses the dollar as its de jure, not just its de facto currency. I don't have a national currency. That's right. Uh, so now they're using Bitcoin. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, and the U.S. is uh, very, very unhappy with that. Very, very unhappy with that, just as they were very unhappy when uh, Saddam Hussein and uh, Muammar Gaddafi were making motions to... Uh, to use gold um, as money in some form in those countries. So I don't think the Bukele will last. I think the US is gonna replace him because he's using Bitcoin as, as money. But uh, mm. sure, it can work because the world is digital. Everybody's got a smartphone. Uh, the one thing that I don't wanna see happen and nobody should wanna see happen is a central bank digital currency where the US government says, well, let's digitize the dollar. We'll give you an account with the Fed. But at that point, you'll be like Will Smith in that movie, uh, Enemy of the State, where everything that you own is, is basically been, can be locked down and confiscated. 
as the Canadian truckers have recently found and the people have contributed to them. So uh, there's a reason why money uh, should be private and privatized. It shouldn't even be a function of the state, quite frankly. And this is a this is a very bad idea. That's that's why I like gold for money, because you, you don't rely on the state. It's actually <clears throat> owning gold is actually a bet on the stupidity of government, which is a for the long term is always a good bet. Well, somebody needs to standardize the unit of account. If we have just 50 different states and 350, 400 million people making their own currency, we're going to have God knows how many different currencies and units of account. Uh, the economy would be almost impossible to operate under such conditions. Which not you need you need some sort of governing body to say, all right, here's one standardized currency. I mean, where I, we're, I'm getting philosophical here, but I'm just I understand. Amusing. No, and this is a very reasonable argument. But uh, if everyone used gold. Okay. Uh, and they'd probably use either grams or ounces of gold. Well, there, there you have it. I mean, you don't need the government to uh, to designate that. Okay. Because in today's world, we've got uh, 200 different world currencies. I mean, okay. So you might have people, some people issuing gold in this form, some in, in that form. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing, nothing wrong or different about that. All right, I'm going to close the discussion on a morally difficult question that uh, one of my toughest uh, poli sci and philosophy teachers in college asked us. Uh, there's no right answer to this, but uh, he and I'm going to modify the question slightly. He asked us if you could have any wish you want granted by pressing a red button. Um, what would that wish be? Now, here's the caveat: every time you press that red button, somebody dies. You don't know who that person is going to be. Maybe somebody close to you, maybe somebody you've never met. You don't know. One person dies, you have unlimited wishes. You can press it as many times as you want. First of all, would you do it? And second, what would that wish be? Now I'm going to modify that for a, l a little bit. Um, instead of a wish for yourself, a personal wish, what problem in the world would you want to see fixed by pressing that button? Again, every time you press it, somebody dies. So I'm asking you to basically weigh cost-benefit here. Right. <laughs> Look, I am a, a you list a lot of problems. What's the most well, pressing I, one? I, I I understand. It's that it's that it's that problem if the train is going down the uh, railway and you can divert it uh, and kill one person for sure, but to save twenty people, if you don't divert it, That's will right. you kill that one person to save the twenty? Yes. This is an old problem. This is another form of that problem that you're you're presenting. Um, <laughs> well, what would I do? What's the big thing that should be changed in the world today? Uh, I'd like to change uh, human psychology so that we lived in a live and let live world. Because the basis of all the problems that we have are that everybody want, thinks he knows what's best for his neighbor and wants to play a busybody. And, and this is, of course, the origin of a government uh, where you use coercion to enforce your idea of what's right on everybody else. So uh, I'd like to change the, the basic psychology, that portion of the basic psychology of the human animal. And actually, uh, <laughs> these people that call themselves the transhumanists are trying to work on that by, by uh, melding uh, computers with the human brain. I mean, there's a lot of progress being made in this way. Well, you haven't, you haven't explained what's wrong with the human psychology. You've just said you want to change it. Why do you want to change it? Because there's too much envy in the world, okay? Okay. Uh, and envy is somebody else has something, I want it. And if I can't take it away from it, I'm perfectly willing to destroy it. I mean, it's a really ugly emotion. Mm. And it evidences itself in politics more than anything else, quite frankly. But uh, what kind of a practical change would I want to make in the world? I say, well, I wish governments would go away with all of their, their armies and uh, their central banks and, and their rules and regulations. That's not to say I don't believe in order in society, but I think that society is generally self-governing and is generally orderly by itself. In other words, when we walk into a restaurant, 
we don't need a cop at the door to ensure that we pay our bill. It's peer pressure, social opprobrium, moral approbation that keeps society together, uh, not a strong government with a strong police force. So uh, I mean, this is an interesting conversation that we ought to have over, uh, over a glass of brandy and a cigar sometime. Yeah, you know, nice. even, even with shows like this one that we're on now, where we can uh, explore things in a little more depth and don't just have to give soundbite answers, is that uh, these are issues that we, we need to explore at length. No yeah. quick answers. There are, yeah, these are complicated issues, and I, I wanted to ask you because you've been thinking about complicated issues for the better half of your life. So uh, thank you for at least amusing uh, uh, that thought with me. Well, Doug, I'd like to uh, close the conversation uh, uh, on that thought. So uh, thank you again for joining us. Thank you for your time, and uh, best of luck with your new, uh, with your new books. Uh, are, you, are you working on another book? Tell us about that. I think you are. Yeah, I, I like to recommend my novels to people. The first mm -hmm. is Speculator. Second is Drug Lord. The third is um, Assassin. As we trace the history of our hero, Charles Knight, as he advances from one more radical op occupation to the next, and we explore the moral implications of these, um, I'd say, unjustly besmirched occupations. So next, Charles is going to be accused of being a terrorist, and that's the title of this book, which will come out um, maybe in December of this year. So uh, go on Amazon and pick up one of those. You're, you're in for a very good read, I assure right. you. Well, we'll no doubt have you back on the show before December, and we'll give a better teaser once the book is uh, ready to be launched. Thank you again, Doug, and I uh, hope to speak to you again soon. My pleasure, David. Thank you. And thank you for watching Kitco News. I'm David Lynn.